It turns out that there are two physical effects pushing the oxygen into the ocean. Both ways are what's called convection currents. And most of us know convection currents cause the winds on Earth. Probably in your seventh grade, like mine, they probably told you. The heat of the sun heats up that air near the surface, and when it gets hot, it has less density, and that causes it to float up, and that's all the winds of the Earth. That's a big deal. But the same thing happens in the water. And common sense may tell you, wait a minute, if you got water on the surface that's full of oxygen, and you heat it up, if it becomes less dense, that's not going to sink. So why do we have currents at all in the ocean? And the answer is, in some years we don't. In past history, there have been times when we didn't. There were many years when we had stratified ocean, but we didn't have fertilizer. <laughs> so we didn't have all this archaic stuff to that volume. But today, fortunately, we do have these currents, and there are two things that make the surface water increase in density. Water is a very strange molecule. Fresh water doesn't become less dense when you heat it up if it's at zero degrees centigrade, if it's at the freezing point. At the freezing point, when you heat it up, it becomes more dense until it reaches a critical temperature. And then above that, it becomes less dense. But if you start with water that's below the critical temperature and you heat it up, it becomes more dense and it sinks. And that's very important because a large part of the ocean at the poles is right near the freezing point. And a lot of the water near the poles is at that beautiful temperature where the heat of the sun can increase the density and bring oxygen to the ocean. And for several years, that was the only thing I knew about it. And then I learned, no, there's another way to make that surface water more dense. What happens is, if you got salt water and you freeze it, the ice is still maybe a little salty. They call it green ice. And the water that's left behind carries all the salt. And so it becomes saltier, and that makes it denser. So because it has more salt, it sinks to the bottom, bringing the ocean. Now the truth is, I don't know which of these is more important. Is it the thermal thing, or is it the saltiness thing? I don't know, but I know it's those two things. And I know there have been big mathematical models that have been tested against real data. And I've asked those people, hey, which of these effects predominate? They don't know, it's kind of, you know, this is too concrete for the theoretical modeling. So these are the two effects. The heating effect and the freezing effect. Between them, they are the source of our oxygen. And so I asked myself, can we figure it out, are these effects continuing today? Now that we have satellite data and all the rest, can we look directly and see, is the heating effect growing or is it changing? Is the freezing effect increasing or decreasing? I would like to use that data to figure out, are we going to live or are we going to die? So I, I've made crude attempts. This is not a big research project. We need a big project. But I have looked at the data. And the first time I looked at the data, it was good news. I looked at the Gulf Stream. People were talking about an ice-free Arctic Ocean. And that scared me. Because if the Arctic becomes totally ice-free year-round, that means there's no freezing effect. And that also means the water is so warm, you lose the other effect. If the salt water of the Arctic Ocean gets to zero degrees C, and if there is no new ice formation, you lose all these currents in the north. And then what you lose is the Gulf Stream. And what happens then is England freezes over and Iceland. They even have prophecies in Iceland about thimble winter. Those prophecies could come true. And I was starting to get scared a few months ago when I heard about the ice-free Arctic. And then I looked at the real data on the Arctic. And it's very reassuring. I even mentioned the web page of the National Snow and Ice Data Center. And if you look at the curves over the last 20 years, it looks like we're 100 years away from that thimble winter kind of problem, okay? At least 100 years, unless it accelerates. Now, some people predict the warming in the Arctic may accelerate, and that is a very serious danger. If it accelerates, then England could freeze over a little sooner than it looks like now. But under the present trends, it looks like the Gulf Stream will decrease gradually, They'll gradually have the Norwegian ports freezing over, 
gradually they'll have problems with the fish, but it won't be overnight. It'll be steady, it'll be predictable, more and more storms every year, but it's not going to be an overnight catastrophe. So that was reassuring to me for the North Pole. What about the South Pole? On the South Pole, I was very scared when I heard about what might happen to the sources of oxygen, the main source of oxygen for the Pacific Ocean. The people who really study the Antarctic currents mostly talk about oxygen coming from these special pools of water called Polynesia. I was on this cruise ship and I heard about these people sitting there going to the Ross Sea, very exciting cruise, and you laugh at those silly little birds, you know, sitting there on one little beach, the Ross Sea, and suddenly I realized those little birds could laugh back at us because we're laughing at the source of oxygen for the whole ocean, which may be going away. And that's what these birds are sitting next to. It's a fairly small area where this freezing effect happens, these Polynesia. The Ross Sea, it's a fairly small area, which is the main source of oxygen for the whole Pacific Ocean. The West Antarctic Ice Sheet may well collapse very soon. There is new data saying the trends will all change and there will be a catastrophic collapse on the West Arctic Ice Sheet. This is very well established. And when I heard that, I said, oh my God, that's where our oxygen is. Most of the press only talked about sea level. There was one article in The Guardian that said, wait a minute, this collapse is where the oxygen is. And I thought to myself, oh my God, what can I do? The red arrow shows where a catastrophic collapse could occur very soon on the West Antarctic. But it turns out the oxygen supply is a few hundred miles away. It's in the West Arctic, but it looks very safe right now. And when I saw this chart, it basically showed that the source of oxygen for the moment seems secure. Of course, you can't tell. A big collapse, you know, there is risk, but basically it looks safe. And I said to myself, okay, probably we won't all die in 40 years. I looked at that chart and I said, it looks to me as if the oxygen supply will continue. It won't decrease at the rate they measured for the last few years because the underlying causes say the oxygen will still come. And then came, I was feeling so good, <laughs> until the next day, I read a good news story from China. 